Hey guys, welcome back. There's two reasons uh, I'm gonna make this quick video. Uh, this is especially for the people who bought the version one of the Thor 300 Vesks. Uh, the first reason is that some of you had uh, shutdown issues on the Thor. And the shutdown issue is that whenever you, um, you power the Thor up, everything is normal. But as soon as you press the foot pad or as soon as you try to ride it or as soon as you test it on the bench, the VESC shuts down. So we tried different firmwares to see which firmware had the switch working in the best condition. Uh, but uh, apparently some of you received a firmware which has a threshold very close to the shutdown threshold of these switches. So what happens is that whenever there is some noise, the Thor thinks the button is pressed and it shuts down. Now, luckily, it shuts down very early or as soon as you try uh, to ride it. So that um, kind of avoids any safety issues with the Thor. So if you are one of the guys who's having one who's having these issues or you're one of the guys who bought the version one of the Thors, which means it should already be delivered to you by the time this video is released, then you need to update the firmware and that should get rid of the problem. So this video is going to show you how to update the firmware and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, just how to connect the LEDs, what kind of LEDs you need for the Thor because that is one of the, also one of the most asked questions in all the forums. So if you haven't received your Thors yet as of the release of this video or if you've received a complete CNC box then you don't have to worry about that. The problem has been taken care of. Um, but if, you're, if you bought the V1s of the Thor and you're trying to mount it and it um, shuts off as soon as you press the foot pads or as soon as the motor spins, um, then you need to upgrade the firmware. So uh, updating the firmware on the Thor should be pretty straightforward. So I've connected the power to my Thor and this could be just your battery or whatever. Um, and then I'm connecting the switch and just turning it on and your Thor should power on normally. You should um, see the green light and then you can normally connect to your uh, VESC tool. So your Bluetooth is on and your location is on. You can just scan Bluetooth and Thor should show up. You can connect it. Then you can go to CAN and then connect to the Thor and that's about it. If you're not connected to the Thor, you can see all your settings, your real-time data. You can and you can and you also see that little blue LED is lit on Thor which means it's connected to Bluetooth and now um, you go to firmware and in the firmware page you can kind of swipe up and down uh, which is kind of intuitive um, given that the rest of the VEST tool doesn't do that so first of all you, you scroll down um, or swipe down and go to the bootloader and in the bootloader you just don't select anything here it's just generic by default and just click upload and it should upload in about two seconds done once the bootloader is updated you can then swipe down and go to custom file because we are loading a custom firmware file go to choose files and choose firmware that um, I have provided in the link below this video also on our discord and it is also in our um, store description page of the Thor so just follow the link and download the firmware and then you can just um, download that firmware on your phone or on your computer and then you choose that file and then just click upload and OK and make sure you don't disconnect the power or do any um, anything crazy during the upload. This is going to take a while if you're doing it over the phone. Um, it's uh, relatively quicker if you're doing it via the desktop. But I wanted to show you that this can be done with a phone. You don't have to really take your Thor out of your build if you already have a board which is closed and built and done. You can just turn it on, connect it to Bluetooth and then just follow these three or four steps and you should be good. Alright, so I'm at the end of my upload. Once the upload is done, your controller is going to restart on its own and then kind of start up like after 10 seconds of shutting down. So there you go. The controller is completely off now and it should come up any second now. 
and now you can reconnect and everything should be good so I'm gonna go back to the Thor and um, I also want to demonstrate how the LEDs work real quickly so in order to do um, anything fun wheel related or a balance board related you need to install the float package it does come installed by default but once you update the firmware you kind of lose all of that it's a brand new fresh start for your controller so I'm gonna to go to packages in the VESC tool and install the float package and once it's done you can tell by the beeps that the float package is working and just give it a second to spawn there it is so float config is here um, all the settings here should work normally the only thing you need to change is the voltage because I'm sorry, uh, go to float package and the only thing you need to ch change is go to specs and the voltage is uh, set for 16S batteries um, due to safety reasons. So mine is a 20S and if yours is a 20S, you can go ahead and make it 85 or 84 volts. I also like to hear the beep whenever I click right, so I enable that. Again, I'm going to have a full tutorial of how to set up your VESC and your front box when you receive it. So that should cover that. So this is just an overview. The reason I want you to install the float package is to show you the LEDs. By default, you have none. So you can go to LEDs and go to RGB and then click right. And now the LEDs should work. By default, we have a status LED of 10 LEDs. So this is our status LEDs that comes in the complete CNC or or the complete die cast box so it should be something like that and if you don't have one of those boxes you can have a 10 LED connected here you can also have a 20 LED connected here um, and then you can just change this to 20 in that case and then you can have a front LED which also comes with the our complete box but if you don't have it you can get one of the four pin JST connectors and then connect that one and then you can also take a reverse LED and connect that one in the last one just like that and the LEDs should work so the, from the first time you configure the LEDs you can see that they're not working is because they require reboot so I'm gonna quickly shut off my VESC start it again and the LEDs should work so here we go, you can see all the three LEDs are working normally. And then you can always change the way things look in terms of LEDs by going to the float configuration LEDs. And then you can say that at idle, I want them to be RGB fade. So you can also do something crazy like that or like that and then that's just basically how you make your LEDs work if you don't have one of our boxes and you want to do them yourself but again um, the main uh, concept the main concept to take away is that if you're having issues with your Thor just update your firmware and it's really easy to do so and again if you're so confused about this whole thing and about our boxes and uh, we're going to release a full video on how to set up your complete box. Well, it's going to be 99% set up by default because it's a complete box. But um, we're just going to walk you through the VESC tool and how to use it and how to configure things, um, which should be pretty quick. So thanks for watching and see you next time.